if you are on the sexual abuse healing journey, you know that it is a journey. And what I didn't expect was the parts of healing that came through my pregnancy and the opportunities that I had to continue to heal even further. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the three surprises that came up during my pregnancy so that you can help yourself to navigate current or future pregnancies to make sure that you don't allow this past trauma to hinder the amazing experience that you could have. My name is Janelle Frazier and I am an intimacy expert for women and couples and a sexual abuse survivor. So the first surprise that happened for me was simply around just women are giving control of their bodies often over to doctors and to nurses. Just like, okay, you tell me what to do with my body. The number one thing that came up was when I started thinking about breastfeeding my child, even though I logically knew I was going to do it and it's the best choice for her, I also felt like there was something like innately wrong with it. Like it was like abusive in some way. It's like all my mind could comprehend was child to um, sexual sexual item, organ. And like that's how I looked at my breasts before breastfeeding. Um, of course now my experience has been very different and very lovely, lovely but in the beginning before she was here, it, I had to wrap my mind around this like nervousness, this panic of like feeling like it was wrong to breastfeed. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, the second thing that I had to work through was knowing it felt very invasive for doctors and midwives to have a say over my body. I noticed right away this um, feeling of protection around, you know, even how many times they look at your vagina or um, just not wanting to have received touch that I didn't want to receive. I think as women sometimes when we're pregnant we kind of just go from like appointment to appointment and like yeah just do whatever you want with me and we kind of just get pushed through and doctors tell us what to do when and I really felt like I needed to um, take my experience and I needed to leave my experience and um, really empower myself to say what didn't work for me and what did work for me when it came to um, things happening to my body. Um, and I noticed that in pregnancy it was really easy for people just to assume you were going to get all these different types of tests done and checks done and procedures and um, and I, so I noticed this really like defensiveness that I actually got an opportunity during pregnancy to really learn how to advocate for my body. So that was actually really surprising. Um, and the emotion behind it was also surprising, how like emotional it was to say no to an authority. Um, you know, the white coat authority is very real when you're chatting with the doctor. Um, you know, it's very easily to be persuaded into something that maybe you don't actually desire and want. Um, and so that was an opportunity for me to really get back into my power around saying no for what, was, what wasn't a fit for me. Um, the, sec the last thing that honestly I didn't prepare for and I had, you know, I didn't see coming was I had a beautiful home birth experience. Um, everything, you know, was very, I'll say crafted and designed and deliberate and we were really able to execute a beautiful experience. What I did not plan for was um, the vaginal tear. <laughs> and so why I'll, I'll share with this with you is for most of my life, um, I had this bit of pain in my vaginal opening during sex. And it was something I just, you know, I just kind of always dealt with. I didn't really, it wasn't really in my awareness that I could change it or to do something about it. And so as, um, what was actually happening though was that area was still holding physical trauma that I had never um, dealt with physically. And so that holding that tension and then you're kind of like, you know, with a lot of force shoving a baby through there, it kind of re-traumatized that area. And so my recovery has been um, very significant for such a beautiful birth experience. My recovery has been more significant, you know, than a lot of women that I've connected with. And because it kind of just like re-traumatized that area. So now in, you know, now that's also brought attention to me to fully heal 
um, not just mentally and emotionally the work that I've done, but actually come into the vaginal tissues and do healing work there. Um, so that really catapulted me into a whole new level of training I didn't, or of healing that I didn't know that I needed. Um, and so those are the three big things that happened and I think no one's really having this conversation about sexual abuse and its impact on pregnancy and so if you are someone who's experienced abuse and you're currently pregnant or plan on getting pregnant it, there is research out there about how we can um, you know have more traumatic birth experiences and have more complications and so I just encourage you to start your healing process become very conscious about what's going on in your body um, and what needs to be healed and dealt with because it is possible for you to have an incredible birth experience but if you just don't know that this can really impact your experience then you um, you know may just kind of find yourself down the typical traumatic birth experience that so many women find themselves in. So if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. I would love for you to share in the comments what is the number one takeaway from this video, as well as be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get the ding ding notification when I post a new video every single week. And head over to my um, website, JanelleFraser.com, sign up for my newsletter uh, and my email community where we do monthly free anonymous coaching every month where you can send in your questions and I'm gonna give you direct feedback and advice on your situation. Make it a great day.